Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. A couple of weeks ago, I told you about how I saved my mother over $600 a year by getting rid of her Comcast cable boxes. And we were able to do that thanks to an app called Xfinity Stream. And although I talked about the app in my video, I didn't actually show you how it works. So what I thought I would do today is give you a demo of it running here on a Fire TV. So you can see how this app works and then maybe help the loved ones in your life navigate it and figure out how to get to all of their favorite channels when you get rid of their expensive boxes. So let's get to it. But first, a little background on what this Xfinity Stream app is all about. It is available right now on a number of platforms and is free to use. The supported platforms include Fire TV, which we're going to demo on today. And this, by the way, includes the Fire TV sticks, which are very inexpensive streaming boxes that you plug into an existing television, but it also works on Fire TV equipped televisions as well. And the same is true of the Roku devices here on the list. It also supports Apple TV, along with newer Samsung and LG televisions. You're also gonna see support for Chromecast. However, this only supports at the moment streaming from your phone to a Chromecast on a TV. There's a device that Google manufactures called the Chromecast with Google TV, and that one is not yet compatible with the app, which we're going to be demoing today. So I would suggest if you're looking to maximize the cost savings here, get a bunch of cheap Fire TV sticks or a bunch of cheap Roku sticks and uh, go to town with those. And at the moment, this is completely free to use, although you're given a warning that at this time you're not going to incur any charges. And it looks like Comcast is uh, holding out perhaps for deciding to charge for this in the future. But I think competitively they're at a point where they really can't anymore. But just be aware of that. At some point they might try to rug pull us on this as they typically do. Now there are though some features that you'll find on their expensive X1 rental boxes that are not on the app. So you will not have access to the Xfinity voice remote, which I know is very convenient for a lot of people. So there will be a little bit of training here if they're used to the voice controls. Movie and TV show rentals through On Demand are going to work only on Roku and Fire TV along with Apple TV, but they're not available on LG or Samsung televisions. Pay-per-view event rentals are not available through the Stream app. There are X1 features such as voicemail, XFi, and my account, along with the sports companion experience are not available on the stream app here. And of course, you will be on your own for downloading Pandora, YouTube, and Netflix, and other things that might already be integrated into the X1 platform. But those are pretty easy because most of those apps, of course, are available on the app stores for the streaming boxes. So let's take a look now and see how this works. I'm running this on a Fire TV because the Fire TV platform is the least expensive. One thing that I noticed, though, in testing this on the Roku and the Apple TV along with the Fire TV here is that the app looks a bit different on each platform. So I'll point out some of the differences you might encounter on each platform as we're walking through the feature set here. And it's just difficult to demo this because all three are actually quite different in how the user interacts with them, but the naming conventions of everything are the same. So for example, here, when we loaded up the Fire TV, I was presented with my For You screen here. And this is where I've got uh, basically the things that they're recommending that I take a look at. And these are all things that are either on demand streaming or uh, going to be on the air. My mom has the DVR recording feature on her Comcast account, and some of the recordings that you'll make will be available right here as well. This is the most recent one that we did, the only one that we did, even though she's been paying for this service for two and a half years already. Now, on the Fire TV, if I push the controller here to the left, it'll pull out a side menu, and I can go over to Live TV, and then I'm going to select All Channels to pull up the channel guide. On the Roku, you're going to have a button right on the main menu to bring you over to Live TV. And the Apple TV has a similar thing where you have to go to the left and pull down the menu to get into the channel guide. But once you're in the channel guide here, it looks pretty much the same across most of the platforms. And so, for example, I can just kind of scroll through what's on the air right now. Uh, let's say I wanted to record Dateline on NBC in a little bit. What I can do is move the cursor over to Dateline, push the button here, and I'll be dropped off on a landing page, and I can click the record button to record the show when it comes on. And then it will give me the option to 
uh, record just this episode or I can actually record the whole series and you can go through here and set up different options based on what your preferences are. So you do have a lot of the DVR controls you might have had on that expensive box, which are now on the streaming box that you paid one time for, and then you can get the recordings across all of them in that stream section there. Now, one of the things that I do suggest you do for your parents to simplify things or to add favorite channels to the mix, and that way they don't have to scroll through this huge menu here or do searches, because remember, the voice remote features don't work on this, and I haven't found a way to use uh, any of the built-in voice controls on the supported platforms to find the channel that I'm looking for. The problem on all of these is that the mechanism to add favorite channels is a mess. It's not intuitive on any of them. Right now, the Fire TV doesn't even have an option to add favorites. On the Apple TV, you have to navigate over the channel and hold the button down for a certain length of time, and then it will add a heart to the channel so it'll get into your favorite list. And then on the Roku, you've got to go through a whole menu option to go and add it to a favorite. But what I found to be a lot easier is to get the Xfinity Stream app on your phone, and then you can go and navigate the channels and add them to favorites in a much more intuitive way. So for example, as I browse through the list of channels here, if I wanted to add sci-fi to my favorites, I can just tap the star button, and these favorites are synced up across my account. So when I go back to the television later, that's going to now be on the list of favorite channels. It does sometimes take a few minutes for it to actually sync up, but it does get there eventually. Now on the Fire TV, if you want to look at just your favorites, what you do is go back over to that menu to the left and you go over to favorite channels and that will only pull up the channels that are in your favorites list here. And as you can see, um, we don't have the sci-fi channel yet, but it will get there eventually. And so mom can narrow down her choices to what she typically likes to watch and not get all the other stuff that she may not be interested in. And again, the interface is a little different for this on the other platforms. On the Roku, you can uh, hit the right button to move it over to the favorites column. On the Apple TV, you actually have to set up a filter to do it, uh, which is a lot more complicated, but it is something I think helps navigate uh, the interface here a little bit more efficiently. Another thing you have, speaking of filters, is on all platforms, the av ability to filter channels by certain attributes. So if I click on the filter button up here, let me show you how I got to that. Uh, so I was down here in the channel guide and then I went up to filter. And what I can do here is have uh, only my high def channels available on the list. So I could hit that and that will only give me HD channels. Uh, some other things that might be useful are the channels that have audio descriptions of what's going on in addition to uh, captioning. Uh, so what you can do here is hit audio description and this will narrow things down to just what has an audio description here. And you'll know you have a filter active because you will see a filter icon pop up. And if you want to get rid of that, uh, you just navigate over to it and push the button to get it back to normal. So if you don't want to make everything complex, then you can just stay in the all channels thing here and search around. Uh, but again, it takes a long time to get through all of this. There is a search interface on most of these devices. So if you go up to search, uh, you can initiate the search, and if you have a voice remote, this would be where you could use your voice to search for something. Uh, but again, not as easy as the X1 remote that you might get as part of the rental fee. Now, in addition to searching for channels, I can search for shows as well, and I'm going to use the microphone on the remote for that, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And what will happen here is it will recognize my voice on the Fire TV, drop it into that search window, and if I go over here to Deep Space Nine, I have the option to do some pay-per-view stuff, but I can also go over to upcoming and see when it might be on TV. And then of course I can go in here and set a recording time for that episode. But the only time I can use my voice is when I am in that search window here. I can't just push the button on the remote anytime I want. I've got to be at the search screen to do it. Now, if you just wanna watch something, <laughs> what you can do is navigate down to the channel that you want to see and then uh, you can either tap on the channel icon here uh, or go over to the program that's currently running. So if I click on NECN Today, which is the New England Cable News Network, it will bring me to this screen here and then I can click watch and that will 
uh, bring me to the live TV broadcast that's going on. It does take a second for it to stream up a bit, but once it is up and running, it'll feel very much like it fell on your traditional cable box. Now, as you saw when we were on the homepage, it did have some of our recordings there. The rest of the recordings are stored in the recording section here. And again, this may be in a different spot depending on what platform you're on, but this is where it is on the Fire TV. And if you go in there, it'll give you a list of everything that's been recorded. I can go ahead here and play it. And this will actually pick up from where she last left off with it. So it does do bookmarking and it will sync those bookmarks across devices. And remember, this is the cloud DVR that's part of her cable plan. So this is not stored locally. And what's nice about this is that every device that she has on her account, including the phones, can pull up the recorded content here. If you wanted to delete a recording, you can go over here to record options and delete it. If you are recording a series, you can also go in and modify the rules that you have for the series so that you can change some recording jobs that you've already set up. But overall, it seems to work fairly well, although the uh, interface on the Fire TV is probably the worst of the bunch. I would say the best of the bunch is the Roku, and the big test here has been my mom's experience with it. So she's now about three weeks in to using this on Roku, and she hasn't called me once to ask me a question, so that's a good sign. I think if I had given her Fire TVs, it would have been a little more complicated for her, primarily because a lot of the interface is hidden on this shelf here to the side. Now, the Xfinity Stream app does not count against your monthly data cap if you have data caps in your region, so long as you are watching channels that have a black background. And what I found with my mom's situation here is that every channel that she's subscribed to is showing up with the black background here. Now, if I go down to the bottom of her list, there's other channels available, and many of these are duplicates of what we see higher up on the channel guide. And these are called TV Go channels, and these are internet delivered. So you wanna make sure that your parents are watching the uh, channels with a black background and not a gray background, because if they get down here and start watching ABC on TV Go, it's going to count against the monthly data cap, and that could be an issue if they leave their TVs on all day. So just be aware of that. TV Go is best used on the mobile app because when you are out and about, you can watch the TV Go channels everywhere. But there's a bunch of channels that you will have on your subscription feed that they don't allow you to stream outside the home. And if you were, for example, to bring your Roku box someplace else, it's not gonna work unless it is on your local Comcast network. So just be aware of that. Anything with a black background, no data cap, anything with a gray one is going to count against it. So there you go. If you're stuck on Comcast and want to save some money, you can get rid of the rental boxes, install Xfinity Stream, and get a very similar experience. If you are buying new boxes solely for the purpose of this exercise, I would get the Roku because I think the app is the most mature on that platform at the moment. But if you've got existing Fire TVs or Apple TVs in the home, it's going to run just fine on these platforms too, just with a little bit more of a learning curve, I think. Now, when you are ready to get rid of those boxes, you really got to stay on top of stuff. Now, we're in a region where we don't have an Xfinity store nearby. The nearest one is like an hour or so round trip away. So they sent us boxes to send the cable boxes back in. We had five of them at 10 bucks a month each. And so I shipped them back. I took pictures of everything to document it. And I tracked the uh, progress of the packages as they made their way back to the Comcast plant in New Jersey. All of them were delivered on March 8th. It is now March 27th, and they did not issue the credit when these things got back. I had to contact them again to get this stuff off the bill. Thankfully, they did backdate the credit to the date in which things arrived back to them. But this is not like Amazon. When they get it back, they're not going to do anything. You've got to initiate it yourself. And it's just another example of why people hate the cable company. They were nickel and diamond mom for years here. And then they didn't even take any initiative to rectify this situation when the boxes got back to them. And in chatting with their support person, they said that they should have set up proper expectations with me, whatever that means. In other words, it's always on the customer to try to get things rectified here. So just be on top of it because, again, they will bill you for these boxes months after they get them back unless you bring it to their attention that you actually return them, which was quite frustrating. 
Now, I would suggest rather than going through their website for support, go to the Xfinity Twitter account. It's called Xfinity Support and just send them a direct message. And the reason why I suggest doing this is that Twitter, of course, will maintain a record of the conversation you had with the rep inside of your DM portion of the app. And this is important because you don't get a transcript from them when you're done on their website. And I found Twitter to be a lot faster anyhow than logging into their website. Just make sure you have all your account details ready to go. Uh, but again, I found Twitter support with Comcast is much better than the support they have on their own website. And my mother has only about one month left on her service commitment and I might be moving her off of Comcast when we get to that point. So we're gonna see if they can be competitive against Frontier and YouTube TV. If they are, maybe we'll stick around with them, but if not, uh, we'll definitely have more to talk about as we look for alternatives. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.